Welcome and thanks for joining me. I'm really glad that you're here. I'm Aubrey Stray Krug and I direct the Land Institute's Ecosphere Studies program. And this morning I'm at TLI's main campus in our Wahab Prairie Overlook. I'm on the north side of Waterwell Road. I'm close to the Smoky Hill River, which is behind me to the west. I'm south of Salina, Kansas, and I'm in Kaw Nation Homelands. And here is where we're going to begin our perennial practice series. My goal is to offer some short experiential learning activities with some prompts for reflection. And while the series will showcase some Land Institute plants and places, I hope to provide ways for you to connect with perenniality and diversity wherever you are in the ecosphere. Everyone is welcome and we're going to learn and practice together. I have never made a video series before, so the practice part applies to me just as much as it does to you. So practice is a way to describe learning by repeated doing. The process matters and the process is ongoing. Practice isn't something you do in a one-time dose, it's something you come back to over and over again to sustain yourself. The just transition to a perennial future is going to take a lot of learning, a lot of practical knowledge and materials and germplasm, and a lot of community practices of the mind and body and heart. Luckily, a lot of people have already begun this work and we can join together to practice. So let's start from the beginning with the word perennial. At the most basic level, perennial just means recurring or lasting for a long time. The Latin root is perennis, which means lasting the year through. For plants, perennial means living for multiple growing seasons or for several years. So perennial plants do vary in many important ways, including their length of lifespan. You can have short or long-lived perennials, but the commonality of perennial plants on the landscape might be even more important to recognize. The diverse, healthy ecosystems found across this planet have been, in terms of plants, mostly perennial. Grasslands, forests, savannas, tundras, Human agriculture has, in many of those places, disturbed or removed or degraded those perennials on the land. Not here, in this little prairie remnant. In Wahab, we can see woody perennial plants, uh, like those trees and shrubs, as well as herbaceous perennial plants, like these forbs and grasses. So here in April, many of the native warm season grasses are just beginning to return. And who you see waving are last year's big blue stem. There's a lot of Indian grass here. Um, there's some Cytotes grama and little blue around, and there's plenty of bundle flower and yucca, and maybe a little cool season brome too that's been introduced. So today's practice that we're starting now and that I just started is meet the perennials. And I've given you a sense of where I am on the land, but I'd like you to pick your own terrestrial place. Um, it could be where you are now, the home or block. <laughs> it could be where you're from. It could be where you wish you could be, but you can't go to right now. So pick a place um, and mark it in your mind and think about what the mental map is that you have of this place you've chosen. I want you to think of it and then I want you to actually sketch it out, to draw it quick. Um, draw it like you know it um, or imagine it to be in the present. So stay in the present. You can draw like a cartographer or like me, like a child. Um, it's fine to just do an aerial view, very simple with a few landmarks. So here I might draw the hilltop, I might draw the path behind me to walk to the bottom land, um, might draw the trees by the river. And once you've got that map, I want you to ask yourself, where are the perennials? Fill them in if you can in the present. So here I would color in the grasses who I know and I would add in some of the forbs. I might add in those trees down by the river. I'm curious though, in the place that you thought of in the present, are there many perennial plants? When people are asked to think of a place that they love, do we tend to think of the remaining diverse healthy ecosystems, mostly perennials, those remnants where I am? Clearly I do, but maybe you don't. In which case, what would a past map of your place look like? What perennial plants were there? You can get as detailed as you like. Um, with your research, your map could become many layered based on maybe what you already know and are remembering. Maybe your map is becoming a tool for you to teach others, um, the people you're with, about your place. Or, and this might be even more important, your map could reveal to you what you don't know. 
where are the blank spots in your knowledge of this land and time and space? What's the land use and land cover story? Who are the voices or peoples who you don't know? How does the plant vegetation change? How and when and why did it move from perennial to annual or back again? Meeting the perennials, of course, involves particular plants and species, not just groupings or categories like grasses and trees. So I want to ask you, who do you know by name in your place? Use your map as a guide to your curiosity and meet one perennial plant. Um, maybe a plant that you've chosen or maybe you want to renew your acquaintance with the plant. I would invite you to learn and say the name of one perennial plant that has been here in your place or is here or could be here in the future the scientific or botanical name in Latin, the common name in English, um, a given name in a language beside English. Look it up. Um, you can give the plant a name too. Um, what would you call this perennial? What nickname based on your observation, based on your memory, based on your knowledge? So there are so many beautiful plants here in the prairie to know. And one I want to introduce you to today is amid all these perennial grasses. I can get down here. You can see, let's say the names. This used to be Sorolia esculenta. It's now Pedomelum esculentum. I'm still practicing that one. Prairie turnip, breadroot, scurf pea, tipson. It's a native herbaceous perennial plant here in the grasslands in the Great Plains as edible tuberous roots, staple food. Um, it's said to be the namesake of Topeka, the capital of the state of Kansas, a good place to gather prairie turnip. I met this one last year when the plant was in bloom, it has purple flowers, and we put these stakes to be able to find them more easily afterward. And now in April, this plant is returning. Which brings me back to perennial practice. The best way to meet perennials is over and over again during the round of the seasons, getting to know them at different times and in different conditions. You'll change, so will they. So come back again. Maybe that means in person, uh, moving around your home. I, mean, I try to walk Wahab here once a week. Or maybe that just means coming back in your mind or through books or through your internet browser, looking to learn more, to say those names, to learn more of the story of that place. So with this, thank you for joining me, for meeting the perennials. Thanks for sticking with me. I hope you've had fun. I would love to hear about how this practice went for you. So please make a comment or share your thoughts or questions and I'll see you next week. Thanks.